box, pretty similar to past Mate devices, and right on the top you will find the smartphone itself, underneath which a little insert, and if we open this up you get a plastic bag containing an instruction manual and a silicon case. Notice the shape of the cutout here. We've then got Huawei's new supercharger, with a ridiculous spec by the way, but we'll get back to this in a minute. Next to that and the charging cable, you also get a pair of USB Type-C earphones, and right at the bottom, a headphone jack adapter, in case you don't want to use them. As you can probably tell, the Mate 20 Pro, from an aesthetic standpoint, is a lot to take in. This twilight gradient finish, the square camera array, combined with it being curved from every angle, makes it look distinct in an age where that shouldn't be taken for granted. The back is made of glass, and I do love this twilight colour option, but I'm torn, because with the midnight blue and emerald green versions of the phone, Huawei have created a new kind of finish. They call it Hyper Optical Pattern. It's really finely textured, and feels kind of like a vinyl record. It's premium whilst also being grippy and resisting fingerprints, and is kind of reminiscent of the Hyper Diamond Cut finish on Huawei's P10 a couple years back and for those of you who've been around for a while, you might know I couldn't stop going on about that phone. The phone also has some other nice touches, like the curves on the camera array being identical to the curve of the phone itself, and this red power key. So, I mentioned that this was a phone with everything, and by that I mean, think of a feature you like on any smartphone, and this one probably has it. We've got an in-display fingerprint scanner, a new type of external storage, not to mention wireless charging, and Huawei's taken it further than that. The Mate 20 Pro doesn't just fast charge wirelessly, but it can actually be used to wirelessly charge other devices. This is an amazing feature. You've then got 3D face detection using a dot projector and infrared scanner, not to mention a huge 4200mAh battery and 40 watt supercharging, which should make this pretty much the fastest charging phone on the planet. Even IP68 certification, it's got that too, and we haven't even started on the screen, camera, and what's under the hood. The display is, and get ready for this mouthful, a 6.39 inch 2K plus 19.5 to 9 aspect ratio OLED HDR panel. It looks very good. It's got a notch to house that depth sensing tech, which hasn't been a deal breaker for me and it's not as offensive as the one seen on some other phones and it can be disabled in the settings. The camera is almost overwhelming in terms of features. There is so much new stuff, even from the Huawei P20 Pro, and this I was not expecting. As well as a 40 megapixel wide angle camera and an 8 megapixel telephoto, Huawei has now swapped out the monochrome sensor for an ultra wide 20 megapixel one. This changes things. It allows you to fit an entire room into an image, acts as a macro camera being able to focus on objects only 2.5 centimeters away, and allows you to natively record video in cinema 21 to 9 aspect ratio. And then there's new modes, such as portrait colour, which manages to pick out people and the clothes they're wearing from the background, and only to colour them. Like with the P20 Pro, this camera array also means 3x optical zoom, and 5 times hybrid zoom, which is still unbeaten. And this time around, the AI can take even more control. If it looks like you're not fitting in all the things you're trying to fit in in your shot, then it can automatically switch from the wide-angle camera to the ultra-wide. Not to mention you've got a 24 megapixel front camera, which combined with this 3D depth technology means more accurately tracked AR emojis. But maybe the most exciting thing about this phone is the chip. It's powered by 6 gigs of RAM and the Kirin 980. This is the only Android phone in the world powered by a 7 nanometer chip, and from that alone we're expecting 20% more speed with up to 40% better power efficiency. It's got two separate neural processing units, each specialised for different kinds of AI tasks. It is an absolute behemoth of a chip, and seeing it in action on EMUI 9.0, this might just be the fastest Android experience ever. This new software has basically trimmed the fat, the number of menus has gone down by 100, the navbar can be replaced with gestures, and some of those actions you previously had to reach up for have now been brought to the bottom of the screen. Oh yeah, and in terms of speed, while we have said this is close to 50% smoother, more responsive, and faster in terms of app starting times, 
and while I haven't been able to do any serious testing on it, you can probably see for yourself, it is not slow. The phone goes on sale on the 26th of October here in the UK for 